Hi, Martin here. Today I want to do a video on how to do the big three. And that's uh, replacing the ground cables at your battery, the one at your engine to chassis, and then upgrading the one from the alternator to the battery. All right, well, I've been working on a uh, wire tuck on this 04 Jeep Grand Cherokee, and it's been going on for like quite a few weeks now. We're almost to two months. And what I'm doing is relocating the power distribution block that sits right in here, and I've replaced it and installed it underneath the back seat. Well, in doing that, I had to take off the front fender because I got cables right here running through this portion. And in that whole process of doing that, uh, I've got to build a new uh, battery cable for the going to the starter and then the one to the alternator. And while I'm at it, I thought, well, might as well do the big three. Um, I've been getting a lot of people wanting me to do that anyway. So what I've got here is it's around 13 feet of number one gauge welding cable. This comes out of your Dodge and Chrysler 300, some Magnums and the chargers around, oh, I think it started in 05. And excellent cable. I've got a video on how to remove this cable from those vehicles. I'll put a link down in the description and one right up here somewhere. All right, well check that out. Now I also have used this cable before uh, when I relocated my battery. That was one of the first parts of my wire tuck. The battery that sat up here, it is also underneath the back seat now. And I used this cable here and I ended up with about oh, 30 inches uh, even left over from this cable because you get to shorten it up some. And then that cable ends up, and here's that battery cable right here coming out of the unibody. That's how I got it back to the uh, location underneath the back seat. Coming up here, and then it punches through right here, and it's about, uh, about three and a half inches away from the rear part of the engine, you know, closer to the header there, but plenty of room there. It's a great spot where I can bolt the positive uh, for your alternator and your starter on the other side of this. So, like I was saying in the process of doing that wire tuck, because there was also a positive cable that ran up to the power distribution block. I no longer need that, so that's why we're building a new battery cable for that purpose. But, we're, you know, we're going to do the big three upgrade while we're at it. All right, well, let's get started. Now, one thing I really like about this cable is well, right there, it comes with that nice factory end right there, and it's even been dip soldered. And then, if you're going to use the positive side, I actually like that clamp right there. Uh, it takes a, a real good bite of the battery post, so I really like that. Another thing I, I really like about it, right there, made in USA, can't beat that. Now, I went ahead and took a measurement of what we need for the alternator cable, and I got that length right here. Now, I'm going to replace the starter cable, and this came off the uh, charger as well, the same one I got the battery cable from. I like how that cable, uh, terminal there is bent over, so that way it just comes up off the starter and comes straight back. And then it comes with this really nice heat shielded uh, material, and then I went ahead and placed a couple uh, pieces of heat shrink on here. This is the dual wall heat shrink with the adhesive inside. I do like that stuff too So there we are. That's, this is about 18 inches long and I'm this is a six gauge cable I'm not going to worry about upgrading that. I'm getting plenty of power to the to the starter I'm not running 12 to 1 compression ratio or anything and then I picked up a assortment of terminals here the ring terminals these are the uh, crimp on or hammer on type. I got a crimper that we're going to be using. This one right here. And it has an adjustable ends on it there for different gauge wires. Now for stripping this type of cable, uh, I would just use a razor knife. I got my Milwaukee right here. This thing works great. You just score it around and you can slice it here and peel this insulation right off. Now it doesn't matter if you strip this a little on the long side. 
because we're going to put heat shrink over it anyway. So this is going to be close to getting all of it in there. And it's going to be a little bit difficult because we've got to get both cables in here is the way I want to do it. Now the terminal I'm using is for one ot with a 516 inch uh, diameter hole right there. And we got the one gauge and then this I think here is a six gauge for the starter cable. And between the two of them it's a snug fit. There, it's going. All right, just like that. Okay, now I got my crimper here. I got it adjusted up for one hot. To adjust this, all you do is open this up a little bit, push down on here, and you can just rotate this really easily. I'm going to go ahead and put one more crimp into that. Just a little further down, right there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and try soldering this up a little bit. Uh, I love soldering everything. I mean, they felt it necessary. As you can see, it's crimped and it's been dip soldered. I'm using map gas. And I did put some flux on this. And I put the heat down here. Now with that combination of crimping it and soldering it, I'm sure it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm going to use some dual wall heat shrink right here. When using that dual wall heat shrink, you want to take it to the point where you can see the glue starting to come out of there. Right there. You can see that spot right there. Alright, I got this section of the alternator cable done. Now, I've also got the two wires in here that go to that connector to the alternator. And then I put this braided loom over top of it to uh, protect the cable. And then here again, here's the starter cable. And then there's the one uh, wire that goes to the starter solenoid and then I got the connector here for the alternator that from the alternator and starter solenoid all right now the reason I went through all the trouble putting this braid and everything on here this actually is part of my wire tuck that I've done before this goes actually under the intake manifold so naturally this is basically resting on top of the engine and we got to keep that heat off of that cable so I got that loom on there to help protect it. All right, I wanted to give you a shot of the alternator cable that I got installed here, the alternator uh, starter combination. There you can see the post coming through the, the chassis there. And uh, it heading off that way. And it goes up behind the engine. And then here I used the original cap that fit over the cable okay. You can see the cable coming up underneath the intake manifold. Okay, under the back seat here is where I got my battery. I went ahead and removed the two screws to hold the cover on. And what we're going to upgrade is this uh, 
ground cable here and underneath the carpet here you can see two cables uh, this one I already did upgrade that is going to the chassis ground right there and there is a kill switch sitting right here it sits right there and I can easily get to that when the seats down or even like it is right now all right that has come in handy many times I just love being able to disconnect the battery just by flipping the switch and I have it hooked up to the ground side and technically that's I think is the way it should be uh, they should tell you to when you disconnect your battery to always disconnect the negative side first well by putting the switch on this side on the ground side you're doing exactly that now um, I got a uh, I like this type of terminals and like the one that I got here on the positive side they got great clamping force I mean there is no way that that is ever going to come loose or spin you know like sometimes you got some of these connectors you think you got them tight and yet you can still move them these got great clamping force and I like the fact that it's got this stud here where we can just put a ring terminal on so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this cable this is I think six gauge I've already gotten this loosened up by the way and uh, we'll replace this cable here that goes to the back side of the uh, kill switch there right there now I've got this one gauge cable here cut to length and then I'm using the one with a factory end on here that's going to go to this battery terminal like so and then we just need to put a ring terminal on this end now this kit that I got here doesn't come with a one gauge cable it comes with two and then it jumps to one aught but if you're careful you can get all the strands in this two gauge you just got to take your time with it a little bit and you can finesse it in there you'll also have to build another cable that'll go from the frame to the engine block it'll be just like this one there we go now I'm going to change this setting here from one knot yeah that's a good job crimping those on there all right I'm gonna go ahead and hit some solder on that Then after soldering this up, I use the dual wall heat shrink, and that also prevents any corrosion from getting in the cable. Okay, I got the new ground cable here, run through the box, and just need to run in this back to the switch. Alright, now I just need to tighten up this one nut right here. Here we go. If you're curious about what these are here for, I made them out of old seat belts. And this is just so I can pull the battery out of here when I need to. Get the cover back on. I got the ground cable connected here to the uh, engine block right there. And now we just got to get this connected to the frame right here. I am actually going to clean off a little bit of that factory primer right there. So this... Uh, terminal makes a really good connection 
and then I'm also going to put a strap in this area here to secure it to the frame. All right, here's a look at the uh, finished product. As you can see, I uh, took the paint off the uh, frame right there. I'm going to probably shoot a little bit more primer on there. Uh, the uh, self-etching primer cover up that uh, bare metal that is not contacting this terminal. Then I secured it to the frame right here so it isn't hanging down. And there it is on the engine block. Well, all right, there we have it. So I think it's really cool is how you know you can repurpose cable that you can find out or pick apart pull it off these Chrysler vehicles and there's other vehicles that have these heavy gauge cables I've seen it in BMWs before but for I think this was under six dollars for 13 feet of this cable and I love the way it comes with that factory end right there on it and if you're gonna uh, let's say relocate the battery to the rear or to another location where you need a longer cable I like the uh, connection that it comes with right there this has got great clamping force and I'm going to put um, related videos in the description below. Please check those out, um, like wire tucks that I've done on the engine bay and on the engine itself. And then I'm still working on the wire tuck on the other side of this engine bay, which is actually going to be more like a two-part thing because it is extremely involved. But uh, please check that out. Uh, I got uh, Amazon links down in the description as well to products and tools that we used in the video, please check those out and do all your Amazon shopping through one of those links. And that way the channel earns a small commission. It really helps out. Thank you. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me the thumbs up. That helps out the channel immensely. And if you never subscribed to me before, please hit that subscribe button right down there and that little bell symbol right next to it. And that way you get notifications the next time I upload a video. I want to thank you all for watching and we will see you on the next one.